He was wearing a duct tape suit, lip syncing Don't Stop Believing, and Josh, you slow danced with a man. I think it I was, was you, Bailey. I really do. I was wearing a dress. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. I am Josh Elliott here with you uh, here with me is uh, <laughs> is uh, Blake Connor and the lovely Bailey Connerly, who, if you don't know, you may remember from his starring role in the zombie movie that we created, Morning Glory as bandana guy that gets kicked out of the back of a truck. <laughs> bandana goon. That's me. Um, bandana that was... country goon. Both, that, that, that's, my, that's, my, that's my prime role right now. Now, Bailey, um, <laughs> something that you, you probably remember, that was the debut of our podcast. In the first uh, podcast we ever made, we told that story of how we kicked you out of a truck. Dude, that was great. Like... Ugh. Because I, I remember you were talking about, like, how do we make this real? I think it was Gage Deckard. It was Gage Perkins. Perkins. Yeah. Gage Perkins. Incriminating who, evidence. Who, he who works are. with my dad out oh, okay. back right now. So, like, he's, there's a chance he's on the premises of this area right now. I can now. feel him. <laughs> don't, do, don't talk too loudly about him, then. <laughs> so, and he, like, brought up just, like, as a joke, just like, hey, should we, we should just actually kick him out of the truck. <laughs> and, you know, everyone was just laughing. And I was just, like, thinking about it. And I was like... <laughs> be too bad <laughs> like i literally spent my entire six years goalkeeping like what's the difference <laughs> people have died and, in the same way yeah exactly <laughs> and honestly if you were to ask me today i would probably say no Just, oh yeah which you know it's funny we we didn't have those danger like uh nerves like nope. that had that had developed yet in our brains because we did a lot of questionable stupid stuff back then when Connor Thompson chucked himself off of like the second story onto one small mattress, I can't, <laughs> I cannot imagine what was going through his head. In a nasty building that we were already trespassing. Yeah, like in. think about like if he'd cut himself like on anything. Oh, he, he would have been a tennis shot. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, like I just think about all the ways it could have gone wrong. Like who knows? He could have like Connor was such a nice guy. He probably would have went to the hospital and not told us. <laughs> we like, Connor, are you okay? Don't, and he'd be like, yeah. Don't worry, guys. I can drive myself. It's okay. <laughs> and his bone's, like, sticking out of his arm. I got my other arm. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I got one arm. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't want to go. Sweetheart. I don't want to go too far down this road because I feel like we'll be rehashing material. But easily, um, easily. the uh, <laughs> the difference in how I like I personally film and I'm sure Blake films like now compared to then as far as like from a safety perspective is night and day because now oh. like I'm very into like fight choreography and stuff and choreographing fights for other people mm -hmm. but I'm terrified the whole time because I'm afraid that like someone's not going to pull a punch correctly or like you know people are going to actually get hurt and mm -hmm. back in the day, it was just not a concern. I was like, <laughs> yeah, people can fall off of buildings and like <laughs> be thrown yeah. into rivers and like, I don't care. But <laughs> Nathan punched Austin right in the mouth in I Am Steve, the trailer for the film that never happened. He was like testing a <laughs> shot and Nathan's like, all right, so basically I'm just going to walk up on him. We like and he just punched him right in the mouth and he busted his lip and like he didn't realize what he'd done for like a second he's like yeah i'm just gonna walk up and and then i'm gonna and then he stopped and he's like oh, i just punched you and it like it, like that that was an accident but it's like i'm surprised more people didn't get hurt like the fact that everybody is alive with all of their limbs is a miracle i mean i almost killed logan baker with a baseball bat like twice <laughs> <laughs> the that's true movie. I didn't hold back at all. <laughs> you were swinging that bat hard. <laughs> I wanted to make it look good. <laughs> and it does. It does. If you look at those hits, it's like those zombie movies are like disproportionately like when you watch them, it's like the action is pretty cool. Very it's just the cool. writing is yeah. bad and <laughs> terrible. So, Bailey, have you come prepared with your list of compliments for uh, the two hosts? Typically, uh, we accept uh, praise from whoever our guests are. No, I didn't bring any compliments. I did bring money, though. Is that okay? Mm, well, I'll take it, and yeah, I'll yeah, mail yeah. it to Josh. Like a thousand, like a thousand dollars each. Is that all right? Yeah, that's perfect. Well, you know, pay to podcast a thousand. Well, I mean, that's a small amount. But. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Speaking of uh, making money doing things, I know that you used to deliver pizzas, Bailey. I still do deliver me some pizzas. <laughs> how yeah, about it, how about that segue? I, that was, that was good. That was good. I appreciate it. Better than the one Paul Blart wrote on it. Tell me about oh some funny stories. Funny stories. Okay, so I always have a go-to one when people ask me this question because I feel like all pizza drivers should because it, it gets asked. So this is when I was at Marco's in Bedford. And I get a delivery for this guy at the uh, Mark III Motel, which for you guys don't know where Bedford's at, right down the road from Marco's. Like this is supposed to be like a five-minute in-and-out delivery. Mm. And it's like one pizza. So I drive to the Mark III. Textbook. I drive to the Mark III. Exactly. Um, I get there, and um, the room number on the receipt doesn't exist. <laughs> like it's, it's, just, it's just not there. So I'm like, okay, I don't like to call customers right away. I just like to try to figure things out because sometimes it's usually just me being dumb. But I just cannot find this room number. I, like, circle the whole place. So my next move was... You know what? I'll just go to the biggest number because that's the one closest to the one I have on my receipt. <laughs> yeah, that's logical. That, that was my logic right there. <clears throat> and I knock on the door, and this uh, transgender man to woman walks out. And, you know, like, it just kind of <laughs> threw me off. And Bedford's a small town, so it just kind of, like, really threw me off. Like, oh, hello, how a are you? A small town where things like that are not common occurrence. No, that is not a common occurrence at all. So I'm just like, <laughs> hello. And the person just like, can I help you? And I'm like, did you order a pizza? And then like, <laughs> this person- See, that's your first mistake. Like, it was- I should have just walked. Like, well, you asked, like, <laughs> did you order a pizza? And it's like, the reaction will probably be like, if I saw a pizza, like a hot steamy pie right in front of me, I'd be like, yeah, I ordered a Is pizza. Is it paid for? <laughs> that's, that was the next question she asked me. Um, the, pers- the person goes, um, oh, is it paid for already? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and the and then the person was like, well, "What's the name on the receipt?" And I was like, "It's Dan or whatever it was." And the, and the guy, uh, the person was like, "Well, that's not my boyfriend's name, but he likes to use fake names every now and then." <laughs> and reaches reaches out for the pizza, and I'm like, "Nope," and I just walk away. <laughs> so then I call the guy, and this guy's just plastered. Like I can't really understand what he is saying on the phone, and I just hang up. So then I go to the motel manager's office, which I know the guy, He's his name's Jack Patel. He's one of the sweetest guys I know. Such a nice guy. I go to church with him. His, um, both his kids are twins. They were in my sister's class. They're both so twins? I know I'm, that is one of them a twin and the other one isn't? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's my story, okay? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. And so, like, he's all of those things, but the one thing, like, he, his English is terrible. He's, he's like, from India. So I go there, and it like, takes me a while to explain the situation. So he decides to go and knock on all the occupied doors. <laughs> and I just follow him around, and he's just, every door is open, and he goes, you order pizza? <laughs> you order pizza? <laughs> and I love Jack so much, but this is just really weird. And, every uh, single door. <laughs> and, like, one guy actually did order pizza from us. Like, I took his order before <laughs> I went on delivery. So I'd explain to him, like, no, this isn't yours. Yours is coming. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> so then I call the guy again. I'm like, where are you? And he's like, I'm at the motel across from the cemetery. I immediately like to click on, but I just don't say anything for a while because I know if I do, I'm going to yell. So I take like five seconds. I go, you mean the Rosemont? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that motel. <laughs> so you're at the wrong place. So I drove there and he like, you know, drunk stumbles out the door, takes the pizza and goes... <laughs> And I get back, and you can tell, you can see the order taker on the receipt. So it's like, order taker, gem, or whatever. <coughs> so I go over to the order taker. I'm like, hey, not mad. <coughs> just wondering. That, um, I went to the Mark Three. said Mark Three on the receipt. He was actually at the Rosemont. And the, guy, and the guy's just like, dude, he told me Mark Three like ten times. <laughs> <laughs> so that five-minute delivery turned into like a 20-minute fiasco, and I only got like a $2 tip from it. Dang. <clears throat> I do um, one really quick one. This didn't happen to me. This happened to a guy I worked with. Um, you know, he knocked on the door and a lady opened the door and nothing but fishnets. Nice. And now, when you say fishnets, you mean she's like tangled up. She's screaming. Like she's like trying. She's, she's like, like a serial killer in the house and she's trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking like fishnet. Oh, uh, okay. And nothing else. <laughs> and he's just standing there. He has a wife in the Philippines and a kid in the Philippines. And he's trying to bring back over. 
So, like, he's a faithful dude. <laughs> and, like, the lady's just like, you want to come in? Sometimes I'd like to let my husband watch. <laughs> And he just, like, I don't even think he made the delivery. I think he just turned around and walked away. <laughs> oh, that's like, um, man, he almost went viral there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you think, <laughs> she's like, I don't have any money. And he's like, oh, then why would you order a pizza? Why you order a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Bailey, um, is the, is the whole, if you don't receive your pizza in a certain amount of time, like it's free. Is that a whole? Is that old like wives' tale actually a real the thing? Spider Man two like gimmick. Thirty like thirty minutes or less, like kind of deal. I don't think anybody does that. Domino's used to like the eighties and nineties, I think, and um, they actually ended up with a driver getting a fatal car crash, so they had to end it. Mm. But oh. I don't know any other. I don't know any pizza. I actually watched a documentary on pizza places like when I was in high school one day, mm. and they were talking about that. Yeah, I kept ordering pizzas from Arizona. It would take them a week to get here, but they were <laughs> always free. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's a good gig. I like it. I recommend it. Good money, good times. No, I'm sure you you meet some you meet some characters doing that. You know, you probably meet you meet some like really interesting like families, and you'll probably also meet the scourge of the earth while you're out there. Pretty much. <laughs> and see, when I worked in Marcos in Bedford, we had like all of Bedford and all the surrounding county. So you got the best of both worlds. You got like the nice places and you got the terrible places. <laughs> I'm lucky now because I work on the east side of Bloomington, which is like the nice part of Bloomington. Mm. So it's usually just like college kids living off campus and then like <clears throat> another bunch of nice families. So yeah, that's cool. I'm, I've moved up. Heck yeah. You're you're make you're delivering pizzas to the big wigs now. <clears throat> now um this is uh this is a uh, Hard segue again, um, but something something else that I, I wanted to touch on tonight that I was thinking about, um, and it, it sort of lends into lends into itself a little bit later. Um, I was thinking about: Did you ever have any like talent shows when you were in like elementary or middle oh, school, yeah. where it was just so like even then I knew that there was no talent. <laughs> you know, it's like did those we all are go just, to different middle schools? I went to Shawswick. You I went, went to I went to St. Vincent. And oh Josh, yeah, you went to, yeah, I guess Josh we did. BMS. Yeah. Oh, man. So we all had totally different experiences, and we pro probably all went to equally terrible talent shows. Yeah. My favorite thing in the world, like, I remember they gathered everybody in elementary school. I cannot for the life of me who remember who did this because I think they transferred away. Um, and it's just one of these vague memories, but I remember this vividly. They had... Um, Everybody collect in the gym, and this was in fifth grade. And they, uh, like, the principal stood up there and he goes, and now... <clears throat> So and so will be doing half court shots. And <laughs> these two, these two fifth graders. Did they put on hype up. music? Yes, they played. Um, oh my gosh, what is the name of that? Song? What is like the sports song? Here it's comes like the a, boom. The, <laughs> well, it wasn't. It wasn't. Are you ready to rumble? Yes. Picture that blasting through an auditorium. Well, there are two. Okay, my favorite thing is there were two of the cool fifth graders, and then there was one of like the lamer guys because it's like two of them were doing half court shots, and one of them was like the ball shag. Like he was running <laughs> after. They had they had two basketballs. That was it. So like they'd each take a shot, and then this other kid would like sprint and he'd <laughs> the two basketballs and bring them back to you and i i kid you not they did this for three minutes and they didn't hit a shot that's fantastic <laughs> man your talent show was so much better than mine <laughs> people just saying like wonder wall and things like that what <laughs> anyway i remember we got to do a fake fight on in like seventh grade eighth grade talent show you got to do a fake fight yeah like that was stage. your talent yeah like we, we auditioned <laughs> one thing and then we and we had one kid sit in a chair in the front and just eating cereal straight out of a box while we fought to like that This Is Indiana rap song. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wait, so, like, awesome. Your teachers didn't know you were going to fight them. No. <laughs> they like cut the music and like rushed us off stage. And like the, the kid who was eating cereal in the chair didn't know what was going on. So like one well, of the teachers grabbed the back of the chair and just dragged him off of the stage. <laughs> he was like, <gasps> and he's dumping milk on himself. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Josh, what's the most terrible thing you remember? From a talent show? Yeah. Honestly, I like my talent shows were so boring. <laughs> like they, like uh, you had Mr. B and L. That is true. Well, the, it's kinda like it's kinda like 
it's kind of like with movies, it's like, you don't ever want to see like a movie that's rated a five or a six, all right? You want a one or a two or like a nine or a, or a ten. ten. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's it. It's like, you want to see something that's so bad, it's like, it's enjoyable. If it's just decent, it's like, whatever. Like if a girl gets up there and sings a little bit off pitch, like nobody's going to remember that and it's not fun. Like it's not great and you're just like, Ugh. but if these kids stand up there to hype music chucking basketballs for three minutes, then that, <laughs> that's yeah. what I want to see. I'll have that memory forever. That's awesome. Speaking now, of 10 BNL, performances, absolutely, Mr. BNL. <laughs> mm, that was basically, uh, so Mr. BNL for the uninitiated out there was basically our high school's version of a beauty pageant for men. And all three of us yeah. participated. It, it, it was and like a satirical one. beauty pageant. Yes. Because like it wasn't taken seriously by, well, it was taken seriously by a few people, but it wasn't taken seriously <laughs> by a vast majority of people. Which no. is like makes it great. No, it makes it great because it's like you have, you. well, it's almost like, it almost feels like mean spirited in the sense of like you compare it to like junior miss where it's like yeah. all of like the girls are like actually participating in a beauty pageant and we're all just up there like for lack of a better term just dicking around <laughs> we're absolutely like, oh, man do you know what the funniest thing to me about mr bnl is like what's not about the performances themselves or anything but just the way that it's like run um i think it's funny that all the participants are like required to essentially go through like boot camp <laughs> like like we had we when had to ship off we had we had I'll training in six weeks <laughs> we, we had training after school for weeks for mr b and l i remember that well they taught us a choreographed dance and even then we barely remembered it yeah but that wasn't it like if that was all we practiced i would understand but we practiced the fitness routine we practiced we practiced everything <laughs> like my my mr bnl was i threw a soccer ball at one guy and lip sync sweet victory by hold SpongeBob. on you guys speak for a second i have something i have something oh. <laughs> but yeah i like lip sync sweet victory by spongebob and threw a soccer ball at a person and wore a dress on stage that yeah. was it and that, that is not need. That, that is did a, not need practice at all. <laughs> that is a beautiful Mr. BNL legacy. It really is. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. One thing I did really love about the practices this though is, the shirt. is that this is the show. Oh, okay, you uh, can I'm just wearing... interject and talk over me. Sorry, I didn't hear any of what you're saying. <laughs> Frankly, I didn't care. It's good to be king. That's the shirt. It should have been said. I just can't wait to be king. But whatever. Uh, it's still. <laughs> yeah. This was stuffed over there and wrinkled up, but I, I wanted I will wear it for the rest of the podcast. Josh, what team were you on? Uh, for the Mr. You know, I was on the white team. Were you? I was on red team with you. You were on red team with Connor me? Connerly. Man, was there the other team was blue, right? Yeah. Because oh. remember, blue uh, team. It was dude. me, you, Tanner Bex, Chris Brown. And some few other people. I like <clears> yeah, I don't know. There were definitely like. There were three groups. I, I do remember that. Um, what was your talent, Bailey? Didn't you have you were a goalie? No, that was my costume. So my costume was like because like, you had to wear a costume for what a club you were representing. So I just represented the soccer team since that's like the only thing I was a part of in high school. So I like wore my goalkeeper jersey. I had like Kurt Angles from WWE's theme music playing, <laughs> and like I had eat, I had this one kid um, like kick a soccer ball to me, and I like saved it in slow motion, and then I like I threw it at him, <clears throat> and I was just like pounding my chest at him. <laughs> And then Bailey, my, 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 my talent was lip syncing Sweet Victory with Cameron Johnson. <laughs> Bailey, didn't you and I slow dance to somebody else's talent? <laughs> did we? I think I think you did. Josh, you were wearing the Gage, Dixon right? Wig. Gage Perkins? Yeah. I was not on stage for Gage Perkins. I, I well, you slow dance with somebody, Josh. I definitely I danced with somebody in a dress, because and I think it was you, Bailey. <laughs> because yeah, probably. It was. Yeah, uh, I, I, we he have was, too many affectionate moments. I can't keep track. He was lip syncing. Like yeah. a song. <clears throat> I don't even know what it was. I think it was um, Don't Stop Believing. Yes, it was. It was Don't Stop Believing. He was wearing a duct tape suit, lip syncing Don't Stop Believing. And Josh, you slow danced with a man. I think it I was, was you, Bailey. I really did. I was wearing a dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my mom had a winter formal in high school that she couldn't go to because it got snowed out. And she never wore the dress. And we had to come up with our own like dress attire for our formal part at the end of the, at the end of the show so my mom will let me wear that dress and it fit perfectly <laughs> <laughs> i have the same it dimension. showed off all my curves i have the same dimensions as my mother and it's weird i guess 
I guess it kind of makes sense. You know, genetics, sort of. Genetics, sort of. Science. Um, Bailey, when you, I first met you, you told me your mom was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I really? Yes. Dude, for like... For like months, it was a sore subject, and I was like, I don't even want to. Like, I saw like photo. Like, I never saw her at your house, but I saw photos of her. I was like, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> oh my gosh! And then one day, Can she I showed up, and I was like, Bailey. I was like, who is that? And you go, that's my mom. I go, you told me she was dead. <laughs> and you go, oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's I wasn't awesome. Try- I wasn't- I wasn't trying to keep that joke going. Well, no, it's just like you. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Like you, I think you told me like thinking that I would know it was a joke. That's payback for when I threw a grenade at you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that story. It's not much of a story, it's just so No, it's funny. not much of a... Well, I had a, I had a dummy grenade once. Ba- this was, it was the first time Bailey ever came to this room. And I said, It was Bailey, during your open house, right? No, we were filming the Minecraft thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was what... And I threw a grenade at him and I said, catch. And he, like, duck and covered. And I was like, Bailey, what? And he, like, I think he thought it was a live grenade. And, and I was like, what do you think? And I was like... Why did you think that? He's like, I don't know. You're Blake Connor. I don't know what to expect. I was like, okay. <laughs> you okay. might throw a live grenade at me. I don't know. <laughs> like blow I up my whole room. You no, threw like me out of a truck. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was Gage. <laughs> the first time I met Blake, we were in seventh grade. We were trick-or-treating with a mutual friend of ours. Like, mm-hmm. I played soccer with him, and he was in middle school. Yeah. And I thought... Like, I thought he was super weird. He thought I was super weird. We didn't really click at first. <laughs> I, lost my, I lost my fake teeth. Like in a parking lot, and he was pissed that we had to go look for my fake teeth. <laughs> it really wasn't until like sophomore year of high school where we were like good friends. Like it's like we Connor and Connor and Connor Lee. We had lockers right next to each other. Mm-hmm. Didn't say a word. Oh my gosh! No, and, then Blake, thought, and then Blake, Blake was also uh, Blake also abandoned your your uh, car keys in the pouring rain when uh. <laughs> We were no, I, knew you were gonna, I knew you were going to bring this story up. I just <laughs> knew it. Josh, that's like when we became best friends. Though. Yeah. <laughs> See, that was that was that was the moment Josh became your best man and I just became your groomsman. <laughs> yeah. Be, be, best man. And uh, that's that solidified the ranking system. <laughs> you were like when you were like sitting there considering back like you had a flashback to like the pouring rain where like you're helping like you slap muddy hands together with Josh and pull him <laughs> up a ravine I only in a pair of Joe boxers and fake blood and then we get back to the cars and Blake's sitting eating a McChicken dry in his <laughs> Dodge Challenger it's funny because that is true I was a bad friend in that moment he had time to go to McDonald's and come back <laughs> I'm not proud of what I did, but it makes for a funny story. <laughs> I had to bring it up. I just had to because it's yeah. just just the, the st- well, like because we just got back. Like, well, we made it all the way to the car and you're like, my car keys. And I was like, it's pouring rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sucks for you. <laughs> I think Blake's plan was to have me go back alone. Like, I don't think he expected Josh to join me. He's just like, well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not my See you at school. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. <Man>. <laughs> we uh, like, like we one day we find out that like you like it wasn't like you got lost in the woods. It's like there was so much rain you drowned. It's so, like we walk back out there to like shoot another video, and we're like we're taking other people back there. We're like, oh yeah, that's where Bailey died. <laughs> like you're just over there <laughs> by your keys. <laughs> I have like my keys, like, in the, like, like I'm Victoria. Like, I at least did this. Yeah, like, they're like no, stuck you're, around like your I'd skeleton's like to think, pinky. I'd like to think you're just out of reach. <laughs> oh, oh, that's like, so, that you're mid reach for the story. keys, and you <laughs> just never got yeah, I'm like this. I'm like a Skyrim skeleton where you see them like holding a sword or like an a, a, a <laughs> <a> arrow <laughs> through their skeleton or whatever. <laughs> you're just a full skeleton. Your body's completely gone <laughs> in one day. I went back to B and L the other day, and I saw that my parking space is still there. That's awesome. I I painted my what was that four or five years ago? Now? That have been like five years ago. And it's like it's starting to fade, but it's still there. Nobody's painted over it. I've got a big uh, Breaking Bad Heisenberg face with my name and chemical symbols at the bottom. And it's too cool to paint over. It really well, is. It, my favorite thing about it is when we had to get approval for all of our parking. Uh, Way the shows. design that we made and there was a lady that we had to bring them through who she was she was pretty strict so like 
she asked me, like, I showed her a picture of mine, and she's like, oh, what is this? And I was like, oh, that's, um, that's, that's Heisenberg. And she's like, what is that? And I said, it's from a TV show. And she said, what TV show? And I said, uh, Breaking Bad. And she said, oh, what's that about? And I was like, it's about a teacher who gets diagnosed with cancer and he starts providing money for his family. And she looks at me and she says, <laughs> she says, that's wholesome. And I said, thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. The woman who didn't know what Breaking Bad was. That's, I thought it was going to be over with right there. Like she was just going to shut it down. But <laughs> and five years later, they are none the wiser. Yeah, five years later, it still sits there, a symbol of uh, the chemistry teacher who started selling meth with school equipment. And there's just there's just a, a silent respect for that parking spot. Like, anyone who gets there, like, I can't do anything to this. Well, thing. I know for a fact other people have parked there before, because yeah. one time I went back and I looked, and, like, I was looking for it. Like, every single year during the summer when I've been home, I've went to look for it, because I'm like, it's got to be gone by now. And every oh. year I'm pleasantly surprised. Guys, this is somewhat very related, and I, it's super random, though. But I was recently... Oh, you were also there, Blake. But um, in. <laughs> I, I don't know. Tell me. This is so random now. But, um, you know, when we went to the Smithsonian's in Washington, D.C. I do. Were you with me when we uh, when we were looking at the giant Google Earth display? Yes. Were you with me for the whole thought of the whole thing? No, not the whole time. I okay. remember Cal was trying to convince children to like he was what, trying to kick them off. <laughs> what were we looking at when you got to it? Your house. OK, dang it. Because before that, the first thing that we did was go to B&L and yeah. and they took the picture like the picture from uh, that they were displaying was taken our senior year of high school. And oh, like, wait, I was there. And, I was there for this. And yes, all, because that was after. Yeah. And all the cars are like in the in the parking lot and stuff. And I don't think I went to school that day because I couldn't find my truck. But <laughs> <laughs> but I just I don't know. I just thought that was really cool because like the Google Earth picture, <laughs> like, I don't I don't know. Maybe that's super lame, but no, we were I mean, talking like about the BNL parking lot and I it just reminded me of it. Well, the first thing people do when they get access to this technology that allows them to take them anywhere in the entire world, what do they do? Like, I'm going to find my house. <laughs> and like, it's like a, it's like a family thing. Like your whole family's gathered around the computer. Like, <laughs> like <"Ooh." laughs> oh, that's, and then your dad's kind of like, mm, that's a little scary. The government's getting a little close. I don't like the fact that you could see pictures of your own house right there on the internet. For anyone I, don't like to see. The, I like that you can see where I was six years ago. <laughs> paranoid fathers but i think that is a step further that people don't usually go like not only can you find your house and that kind of stuff but you can also find like exactly where you were when the picture was taken like if you find your car like you know yeah. where you were when that picture was taken <clears throat> and that's a little wonder, that's like a little cool when the Google truck drove around, because like the photo from here has not been upda updated for like my house. It's not been updated since like 2008. Um, so like the Google truck must have driven through once and said, all right, I'm never coming back here again. Like I'm far from home. <laughs> like you think about the antithesis of Google. It's like the rural area where we live. That's not where the technology began. So is that how they do like the street view? Like they, they have, have a, a 360 they have a truck? van. Yeah, it's got like a big camera all the way oh, around. No. Like it, it live updates as they drive because otherwise, like, I, well, I guess to be fair, I, I don't know if it like live updates, but like I can't imagine the process of like exporting and uploading all of those photos because like you can move in like foot long increments, you know, like in Google Street View, like when you click through, you can see like not only can you see images of your house, it's like you can see your house from here and from here. And from here, and from here, like all the way down your street. Have you ever played the game where you like turn off where you, like where you are, and you drop yourself in a random place in the earth, and you have to like find an airport? I've heard of that game, but I've never find an played. airport. That's the find an airport. I like I, I tried to play it once. Like yeah, so you can like escape from wherever you are. Is like the idea. And yeah, I, remember, I, I, I played remember a, doing it once. I played a game similar to that where it was just guessing. Like you had like the street view. And you yeah. had a certain amount of stuff you could look at and you had to guess like where in the world you were. Ooh, that been tough. Yeah, it is hard, uh, but like like you can like 
you'll surprise yourself by how close you get sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. And then sometimes you're just completely off. Because <laughs> I remember when I, I, I did when I did it, I was like, I gave up really because like I could not find an airport. I could not even find a city. And like I just, you were like, just turned, walking through the wilderness. Pretty much. And I just like turned my locator on. And I was like in the middle, like rural Israel. <laughs> like, there's no way I'm going to find an airport. I'm done. I'm dead. Now, Bailey, you went to uh, you went to Ukraine, right? Oh, uh, no. To, I you went to, to Prague. Where, where did you go? I'm sorry. So, like, I studied abroad in uh, Prague, but I also Prague. went to uh, Poland. I went to Auschwitz when I was in Poland. And Ooh. I also went to Munich, Germany. You told me a story once. I, I couldn't quite place where you were geographically, but I remember you told me a story of a, a Russian man kicking down a door for you. No, he he, he offered to. Oh, so Here's the whole okay. story, so I'll, I'll make, I'll make oh, it quick because I, I went along with the pizza one. So we were in Munich, Germany, and the people I was traveling with did not have their passports on them because they were like, it's the Eurozone, you can just travel across. But what they didn't know is that police can still stop you and like hold uh, hold you if they're, um, you don't have a passport, and private transportation systems can deny you if you don't have a passport. So I had mine. So I go back to Prague. I'm going to get their passports for them, go back to Munich, and get their passports so we can go home. And um, How far away is this? Could you give it's me It's about four hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was about 16 hour total. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was really upset because I was just like, what? even if you don't need a passport, you're, just bring you're in a foreign country. That's another identification. But anyway, so I get to Prague, and we lived above a bar. And I can and I, I tried to go find the roommates. The roommates were in the bar, but like their actual rooms were locked, so we couldn't get into their rooms to get their passports. And there's this Russian guy who I was just who I was like hanging out with because like the World Cup's going on. So he would come to the bar and watch the World Cup when I was there. So we were like, we were pretty. You're vibing, yeah. Yeah, we were vibing. And like uh, he goes, I know how to kick dumb doors. And, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, give me 15 minutes until we figure it out. Finally, the landlord got back to us and was able to let us in. But I was 100% ready to let that guy kick in the door. Yeah. He, okay. also, taught, he also taught me like a, a Russian toast, Nostrovia. Nostrovia? Yeah, he bought me some drinks before on the going on the bus. He bought me two shots of like, I don't even know what it was. But he's like, <laughs> one for <laughs> your stress and one to help you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this story, um, the, the Russian man offering to kick the door down for you, Bailey. Yeah. Um, if if shout out to Cal Richard Kimmon, if Cal was in your shoes in that moment, Bailey, he would have absolutely told that man <laughs> to kick the door down <laughs> because Cal has so many interesting stories. And I think it's because he intentionally and maybe not always intentionally, but he just does crazy things like in, he puts himself in, that, in a situation in that situation. I feel like for the story's sake, you, you got to be like, yeah, just yeah. Kick it down. <laughs> <laughs> Go for Wonder it for a much better story. Because <laughs> no. that's like that's the thing. You told me that part of the story and that's how I remembered it. Like, I thought he did kick the door down. I, that's what yeah, happened. I should have let him. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have had to pay for it. It's not my room. Oh, that would have been great. Like you get back and like then they're like mad about it. And you're like, hey. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, you think about the journey that you just underwent. Like, on, I let him kick your door. I'm down. on a 12 hour <laughs> run here. <clears throat> I'm going to the store. You need anything? I'll be back in 12 hours. I do recommend Prague, though. Prague's a pretty sick place. <laughs> like, if you want to go to Europe and actually feel like you're in Europe, Prague is the place. All right. Blake, you were, uh,. You were talking about before the podca podcast that you wanted to um, discuss Volley Bob. <laughs> we were talking about this like a week ago. Volley Bob. Now, Josh, Where do you it, is my, it is my understanding you don't remember who Volley Bob is. See, yes? I, I, I don't do think mean? I was... Don't I don't think I was. At, I don't think I was at school that day. Well, and from Josh this podcast, it's going to sound guy like who plays volleyball, right? And I said, no, you're way off base. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like I feel like this podcast is making it sound like I never went to school in high school. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't at school that day. We went to different middle schools. I don't remember volley, Bob. <laughs> like you're like I danced with you, Bailey. He's like I don't remember that. I don't think you did. Maybe Josh wasn't even at Mister BNL. It was just a Josh <laughs> look. Like, I digress. <laughs> Listen, let me let me describe Volley Bob to you. And if at any point you want to jump in, Bailey, feel free. Volley Bob, one man with the strength and agility of five men. 
This man made a living by going across the country, playing against whole teams of high schoolers and I believe, what, like co- some colleges, some like colleges, smaller colleges, colleges, playing against their teams of volleyball players, their whole team, like they're all stars as one man. And he beat almost all of them. Like, he had an astonishing record, this man. Um, Did he, he actually, to, though? Do you believe him? Or do you think it's just what he says we to knew people? Very no, well no, listen, this listen, man Josh, if you, maybe you missed school that day. There was a twinkle in this man's eye. He charmed all of us, okay? <laughs> there was a second where, like, we forgot that he was the dragon that needed to be slain. Like, he walked in, and you're just so, like, in awe of him and his, like, 45 groupies that came in with him. Yeah. You know, like uh, the older women, like the cougars who were like following after him. Every <laughs> teacher, every female teacher that day who wasn't married, and even some of them who were, who were left with him that day in the oh, tour bus. Nice. No joke. Volley Bob, he comes out, the, the guys, you know, like the guys, uh, like, I don't remember. We don't have to name. It was like people. it was like all the cool guys. It was like the cool guys like, who like, were like, cool. oh yeah. yeah, like we'll beat this guy, like no problems. Well, they get out there and he mops the floor with them. Okay, he doesn't get into the corners of the room very well, but he mops the floor with them. He then decides to take on uh, the girls' team, which you know, was the teachers team. next. It was, oh, it was a team <laughs> of teachers. Yeah, he had to get some casual flirting in with with the girls. Right, the and there was like actually <laughs> one one girl that like coached volleyball, so she like got into some good shots. But <clears throat> it, 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 he just he he, mm-hmm. he, he nailed. He might have let her. He killed. You know. <laughs> anyway, then he gets to the girls' team. Well, and for those of you who don't know, well, Bailey, you're about to get married to one of those volleyball players. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> you heard that? What do you, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I've been told. In passing. <laughs> you know how good they were. And yeah, they were uh, good that year. Now, Lexi, she told me that uh, his manager, his agent, or whoever it was who, like, handles volleyball's business or whatever sort of business he conducts, <laughs> came up to hit, came up to uh, the girls' team, and he was like, listen, he's, he's watched some of your highlights, and he's... He's a little nervous. And like to think they've got this big energy boost now. Like, oh, they've they've made volleyball scared. And they took him to town. I've never seen a man run more ragged in my life. Pick, you know, he, would, he would have to pick up the microphone and like say something about bullying or something every now and then. <laughs> and he was like out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about it that was funny is like it was an impromptu like pep rally. Like, like so no one he knew was, it was happening until that day. Yeah. Like, hey, we got to so, school and they were like, you're on an assembly schedule now. Oh, go ahead, I'm, I'm a little confused. Um, what is the purpose of him being there? Is it just to like show off I, his skills or I is, think it was is he talking about bullying? <laughs> I think it had to do with bullying, but I don't know what it had to do with. Bullying. But like, so he beats part- the cool guys and then he's like, and this is what it looks like to be embarrassed in front of your entire school. All of you <laughs> suck. And this is also an example of bullying. <laughs> And then he goes to the girls, and then they he is on the receiving end of it. Receiving end of a spanking. It was... <laughs> <sighs> like, the thing that, about it that was funny is, like, we got to school that day. They're like, hey, you're basically on, like, a two-hour delay schedule right now. And then at the end of the day, at, like, 1 p.m., everybody's going to gather in the gym. And we're like, what for? And they're like, you'll find out. Volley like, Bob. Just speculation. Volley Bob's coming to town, baby. You know, all those teachers who got the email, like, that morning were just like, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you know Volley Bob's coming to town because, like, the next morning there's garbage in the streets. You know, there's, like, just trails of, of alcohol everywhere. And all the men are crying because their women have left. He's like Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where, Where did, did you go? go? Where did you come from, Volley Bob? That doesn't work. <laughs> I, I'll never forget. I said I told Lexi I wanna I wanna find an artist. If there's any artists out there who watch this, I want you to, without knowing what these high school girls look like or what volleyball looks like, I want you to commission a piece. Um, five feet <laughs> by seven feet. Um, canvas oil paintings of uh, volleyball personified as a great dragon and all of the the <clears throat> high school girls as knights in shining armor slaying him. I would pay good money for that. Wood carvings would be acceptable, too. Yes. <laughs> or ice sculptures. I can't. You can just send them in the mail. <laughs> like we can, we, oh, my God. You know how funny that would be if, like, you just started mailing random people. Like, there's, like, like a big box. I just and, got a and it, there's big water. wet box. <laughs> there's, like, a big wet box of water, and it's, like, here's your ice sculpture. I worked for months on it. <laughs> it's just, like... <laughs> Like, 
<laughs> oh god, I want to do that. That would be so fu- like it would be so funny to receive that. Like just the joke. Like the fact that it maybe it was an ice sculpture or maybe they're messing with me. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it is really funny, guys. I think we have a business. I don't think we can air this podcast now. Mail- <laughs> no, because then somebody else is going to take our <laughs> mailed ice sculpture idea. <laughs> My face hurts from laughing. This has been fun. (laughs) I also have a job, a second job, working at Elliott Stone Company in Bedford. It's like a limestone quarry. I do like baby work in the office, though. I'm not like in the middle or the mine or anything. Okay. And all most of our clientele is like northeast people from like New Jersey. Oh, Bailey, I I know what you're gonna say. New York and stuff. (laughs) I don't. So keep talking. It's like really. I just don't want him to die. Really pushy people, <laughs> and it's crazy. And also, we I got to talk with like my boss, and my boss was just like, "Yeah, we have a handful of customers that are like, no doubt mafia members." <laughs> I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, a few years ago, police found dead bodies in the foundation of a building that's being constructed, and they're using our limestone to build it." <laughs> nice. And there's this guy named Scott who's like the foreman of the mill, so he like he does like he like he's in charge of like all the cutting and stuff and like all the orders. And he he like lets us throw him under the bus when customers ask where their orders are. He's just like just let him know Scott said this long because he he's like I don't have to talk to them, you do. And then so we were talking about that, and he was like, yeah. So when the mafia comes to town, they're gonna come after me first. They're gonna be like, who's this Scott guy telling us that our orders are always so late? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I order an ice sculpture from you people, it's just a wet box. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, sh- they show up and they're like, hey, listen, I need uh, size 11 concrete block. I mean, I'm sorry, not size 11. I need uh, about the size of a foot concrete blocks and I need them by tonight. Can you get me that? <laughs> I, thank you. Just deliver them right over to the river. <laughs> Just leave them there. I'll leave the money. You pick up the money and you go. <laughs> no, and there's this one lady who, um, she's very pushy, but she's actually kind of nice lady. She's very dramatic. Um, her name is Maria and she's from Italy. Like she's from the Brooklyn. She's from Brooklyn and the business is called like, uh, it's like a Sicilian building material, whatever. Uh-huh. And like she has this very thick Italian accent, mm. and sometimes she'll talk to you in Italian if you like get her worked up. But I was just thinking about that because I, yeah, yeah. Like I said, nice lady. She's just, yeah. But a lot of there's, East you know, there's nothing I can contribute without being offensive here about shouted Mamma Mia, but that's not a good thing to do, is it? <laughs> 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 you know, Blake. So. You bringing that up, I think, is kind of funny. And um, just because I was thinking the other day about some videos that we have made and released. And I specifically thought about Indiana Josh, too. Oh, I just watched that. And I guess Indiana Josh as well, like both of them. Yeah. But so in those videos, we there are Nazis. And obviously we can't portray Nazis as being you know, cool and capable and like those kinds of things, because, you know, like, yeah, all of that horrible history. But at the same time, <clears throat> the way that we portray them is homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> now, as to be a, fair, I don't know if we ever asked Alex to do that, did we? <laughs> did we ask Alex to do that or did he do that himself? But but we also we dressed all we of them up. Him. We dressed we all of him. them up in a very flamboyant fashion. Yeah. And I feel like that is not okay. <laughs> in a retrospect. Yeah, well, um hindsight is 2020. Um well now listen, I um I here's an admission of guilt that um it's something that um honestly like at the time it just didn't seem like like a bad idea. The first yeah, video that's true. at the at the the first time the first video I ever made, Josh, I don't know if you knew this. You might have. First video I ever made was called I Didn't Survive a Ch- uh, Chinese Game Show. Yeah. Yeah. And um well, I made it with uh, my friend Jared Bridwell and we were on we were 12 years old and we just watched MTV and we watched um, a show called I Survived a Japanese Game Show. 
and it was just like man it was like nonsense it was like bonkers like picture yeah. um what's that what's that shit wipe out like with like <laughs> big things and they're like just screaming in japanese and it's like high energy and like people are just getting bonked like that all over so like we were inspired and we went upstairs and we made a terribly offensive video just like making sounds that we thought sounded chinese <laughs> and you know, looking, it's like at the time, like we thought it was hilarious. And like, that's pretty much what started my, my whole uh, career of like filmmaking. But then you look back and you're like, man, it's just like, also at that time, it probably would have been like, I was 10 years ago. So it would have been like 2009, something like that. Yeah. It's like, we were not into the culture that we are of today of like hyper offense and jumping on everything. It's like Facebook and like MySpace was still around at that time and like, these things were pretty lax, or at least yeah. it seemed that way. And now it's like, I look back and it's like, oh, not terribly proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's weird with writing comedy because, like, we are in very much a season of political correctness, which mm. I think is overall a good thing. Um, there are definitely instances where it's taken way too far and it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's like, OK, this shouldn't offend you. But I don't know. It's like there's a weird line where I don't always know where it is. It's like, what can I make fun of and what can't I mm -hmm. like? I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of awkward. I don't know. The I, don't only, know well, I don't know. What somebody's the butt of, of a joke. Somebody's yeah. the butt of a joke every time. It, like it has to be. Yeah. That way, because otherwise it's like you're not making a joke. You're like being polite. And like that's that's like I think what makes a joke funny is like especially if somebody takes it well, if it's like uh not a mean spirited joke yeah you know i don't it isn't it is interesting to think about it's not something that i consider often i think that's why we go black comedy so much and like violence as humor i think we're kind of like use not as a scapegoat but it's like it's less offensive it's more shocking <laughs> yeah cheap laughs cheap laughs we're not smart well, enough to get genuine laughs so we <laughs> resort to <laughs> the cheap stuff <laughs> We resort to Bailey hitting someone in the face with a newspaper and then uh, a gunfight. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. Like pull out guns. Sir, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was oh fun. Well, that's just subverted expectations. I think that's my favorite type of comedy is like subverted expectations. You're it thinking is one thing's going to happen. It's like, oh, what's going to happen? You hit him with a newspaper. Like the name of the video is the paper boy. And it turns into like a bloodbath, like a <laughs> gunfight and a bloodbath. And you're like, by the end of it, you're like. And everybody what? is very heavily armed in ways <laughs> that don't make sense. But <laughs> I got a little kid watching that video at Arby's one day. I thought that was awesome because I heard the music and I looked over and I was like, yeah. wait, you you were in you were in Arby's. You said Arby's and, yeah, I was in Arby's in Bedford. And I heard the music and, and you I saw heard. some rando kid watching yeah, the just paper like boy. Six or, that's like seven or eight year old kid just like holding a phone watching it. That's really funny and really awesome. Hey, you should have walked over and like put your hand on his shoulder, and then before he could scream sh "Stranger Danger," you like, Shh, and you walk out because no, he no, 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 no. He, sh you should have crumpled up a receipt and threw it at him, and then said, "Oh, sir, I'm sorry." And, and then he goes, hey, "I'm trying to watch this video," and it goes over his head, and then you're like, "Oh," <laughs> like he doesn't put two and two together. Oh, kids are stupid. <laughs> I just made a really I just made a really good joke and this kid didn't even notice. Well, it'd be like like picture you're so famous, you go into like a random chat room. Like uh if you were like uh Tom Cruise, right? And you went into like went on to Omegle and you're like, "Hey, I'm Tom Cruise." People would be like, "No, you're not." Shut up. <laughs> and you like probably say a lot of racial slurs like. <laughs> they'd be like, "No, I'm Tom Cruise." Like, well, the second that you proclaim to be a male on Omegle, they're not going to be talking to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Disconnected. Oh, oh someone named Tom? No, thank you. <laughs> I have one more. I have one more topic before we uh, before, before we land we this plane. Wrap her up. If you guys are interested. Yes. But Shoot. have you guys ever heard of the trolley problem? Yes. No. Go ahead okay. And tell us. Explain. So, th it is. It's best. It, it's basically a. Um, what'd you say? Did you say something? Me? Yeah. No, sorry. I was picking my ear. Oh, really okay. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to draw attention to it. But, uh, 
But it anyway, funny because I did it and I was like, this is going to be so inconspicuous. No one will ever know. <laughs> and like, what's that out? sound? Is that earwax rolling around? What's the sloshing I hear on the <laughs> other end of the line? <laughs> Anyway, the trolley problem. So it is a question of um, of like ideals. I don't I don't know. Morality. Like, yeah. It's like a moral it, dilemma. Yeah, it's a moral dilemma. And essentially what it is, is you are a witness, a bystander to a horrific site where there is like a train uh, or like trolley, whatever, like like barreling out of control like down these tracks and there are five people tied to the tracks like and the trolley is going to run over them and you notice that you are right next to a lever and the lever like switches the tracks so by pulling the lever you can save these five people but on the other set of tracks there is one person tied up and the moral dilemma is like debating whether you should pull the lever or not, because you are passively watching five people die as opposed to actively killing one person. Like also, essentially is the dilemma. I've also but, um, heard that um, in some instances of this, the one person is somebody that, you know, well, we could talk about that next, but I would like to address the basic like the basic like trolley problem first where it's like they're all strangers because to me strangers. to me it feels like a, a, an easy like answer um but i want to hear what you guys have to say i don't even is a moral because that just sounds like a tragedy to me <laughs> oh yeah like, i mean it is but like, there's no good answer here. i pull the lever see i one death what, versus five i would also pull the lever yeah because for me, like, I get why it's a debate because one is passive and one is active. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would argue that both are uh, that both are active. Yeah. Like well, choosing not to act is an action in and of itself. In yeah, my as opinion. Peter Parker, he could have stopped Uncle Ben's killer, but he didn't. Bailey, uh, what, what would him. would you pull the lever or would you not? Oh my goodness! Um, You're like sweating. Over is, is, that, is, that my, is that my only option to pull or not to pull? Yeah, the only option is to pull oh, or that, not to pull. That is the question. Oh, I don't pull. All right. Okay. I don't pull. Yeah. And what's your what's your reasoning? For well, reasoning one is like you said. Act, like I feel like I would be actively killing that one person if I did pull it. Okay. And also reasoning number two is there is a good chance that not all those people would die. Like, I was one of like the first three bodies might protect the last two or last one. Oh, I think we're living in a world where they're just smushed. Okay. Like, because I, like, um, I, I think it's just like lost hope. For me. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. trying to find a silver lining here. Like, I, I think yeah. that, um, that's I the, have, I've wrestled right. with, I wrestled with it too, like when I was thinking about it, because, um, part of me was like, you know, I am not responsible for like either a another person's evil actions or b like this freak like accident. Like they're tied to the tracks, so it's somebody's like malicious like intent. Yeah. But like if I don't pull the lever, it's like it's not that it's not like the five people dying is my fault. Like I'm not the one that put them in that situation. But at the same time, it's like if I have the opportunity to save four people as opposed to one. Yeah. Like, like four, 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 four additional people. Like, I don't know. I, I don't think that there's a good or right answer, <laughs> but no, I think the thing that's interesting about this is well, they made us do, they made us do this problem where I used to work. They sat us down like in a meeting one day and like we were talking about things. It was kind of like, I don't even remember what the context of the meeting was, but they brought up the trolley problem. And nobody like, and I think this is interesting, um, Bailey, because you like, like your line of thinking, like it's, it's kind of similar to theirs in the way of like, they laid it out. They're like, all right, here's what happens. Like, don't pull five people die, pull one person dies. And everybody's first reaction is like, well, we like, 
try to tip the trolley over. We try to like make it to where it stops. And like, they're like, no, you don't like, that's it. Like the, these are like the only two alternatives. And it's like, there's, it's yeah. like, interesting because like, it's not a question people want to answer. Well, I mean, because in real you know? life, like I feel like to an extent it's not realistic because in real no, life, it's never gonna happen. in real life, even if you were in that situation, I don't think that I don't, I don't think that you're limited to those two options. No, you're right. So it, it is it is more difficult, like naturally to be like, like, like limited to those two possibilities where yeah. in reality, if you were there, like there are plenty of things that you could do now reverse that now reverse this trolley problem. Let's get real personal. Let's say uh, the trolley is driving towards one. Per- it's like going to hit one person that, you know, and if you pull the tracks, it will go and hit five strangers. And the assumption is you can't do anything to change it. It's just an answer. Um, <clears throat> like one person that you know dies or five strangers die. So if you yeah. do nothing, if you don't touch it, the person that you know dies. What do you think you do? I feel like I would let the person I know die depending on who they are. Like, Josh, if it was you, I feel like you would understand why I wouldn't pull that. Yeah, I feel like, I, no, I, I like would. You, I feel like you'd come to terms with... So for me, it's, it's difficult because... Um, Oh, I had a I had a thought process, but I lost my I lost my train of thought. No pun intended. But um, <laughs> my, I lost my trolley of thought. <laughs> my, I lost my trolley problem of thought. Uh, <laughs> Blake, you speak your mind real quick, because I'm going to try to remember what I was thinking of. Well, listen, I'll be honest. I think I'd send it at the strangers. I think I'd do that. I mean, if I'm just be like if if I have to make a gut decision. There's somebody that I know. Well, like Bailey said, too, it depends on who I know. If it's somebody that I don't like, maybe it's like, oh, what a tragedy. (laughs) But if it's somebody that I love, you know, and I have the chance to stop it, I would. I think as horrible as it sounds, I think it depends on the person. It does. It it totally does. like, Like, if it's somebody that I know and have a relationship with and... Um, yeah, like I don't even know. School I don't. Teacher. I don't know. Though. I'm like, oh hey, <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm I don't sorry. know though because I actually don't think I would pull the lever because the five people, albeit like they are strangers, but they didn't do anything wrong to be put into this situation. You know what I mean? But did the one person? No, no, I'm just saying that, like, yeah. all of these people I mean, are there because of somebody else's, like, malicious mm-hmm. actions. People but, don't just tie you up and throw you on a track yeah. for no reason. Like, you obviously did. Unless you something. exist in a 1930s cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> <You're>, I mean, <laughs> I don't I know if you'll... It, I expect to be on every other podcast. I don't know if you'll watch your... I Bailey's mean, a regular now. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think about it, you'd probably want to watch your own podcast. I, I will. You? I will. Yeah, like, it. when it when it airs, it's like... Sometimes when I watch back podcasts, I'm like, oh, I said that. Because like, <laughs> like, being a video editor. You like, said that. That happens to me all the time. Like, I'll, be watch, I'll be listening to our podcast. I was like, what am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> or like, I tell a story and like when it's over, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But it's like the integrity of like, I shouldn't cut that. Like I said, it. <laughs> that, like doing a podcast. That or, that or it's like, oh, I've told that story so much better in the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, man, I just... I mince meat of that hilarious story. <laughs> anyway, we will see you next time. Goodbye.